Honda is a strange company. Their flagship superbike is famously the Fireblade. A bike you would think the largest motorcycle company in the world would no doubt splash out on and completely destroy the competition with. And yet somehow they sort of not done that, especially over the last decade or two. For example, in 1998, the 919 Fireblade was completely outdone by the Yamaha R1. In 2001, the 929 Fireblade was outdone by the GSX-R1000. And the 954 Fireblade was again outdone by the next GSX-R1000. In 2004, the spanking new CBR-1000RR Fireblade was outdone by, well, everything. And the 2008 update was immediately surpassed by the mighty BMW S1000RR. Then the world went bankrupt and people were forced to eat their dogs. So there was no new model until 2017 when Honda completely redid the Fireblade again. Well, nearly. The motor was mostly the same and it was a good 10 horsepower down on nearly everything else. But don't worry, Honda said. They'd make up for it by making it the lightest bike in the class. And it's true, the bike was great in the turns and good on tight twisty tracks. The problem was that every time it arrived at a place that required a good deal of open throttle, like tracks with a longish straight or, for example, the open road, it was once again outclassed. Despite all this outclassing, the Fireblade somehow did well in showrooms, often topping the sales charts. The reason for this is because Honda stuck to their guns of building affordable, reliable, everyday machines. That is, until now. Here we have the 2020 Fireblades, the CBR1000RR-R and the CBR1000RR-R-SP. And it appears that Clark Kent has removed his glasses and popped into a phone booth. To test their flying capabilities, we're here at Red Star Raceway and we've asked our favorite magazine editor, Rob Portman, to give a hand. Naturally, he was excited. I actually cannot believe it. I am on a brand new Honda CBR1000RR-R. Can you believe it? These bikes are completely new, redesigned from the ground up. And instead of going the user-friendly route, Honda has gone a bit mad. The looks on you, that gulping Stormtrooper mouth channels air directly through the steering neck like a MotoGP bike. Honda have said that they give you wings, but now they mean it, literally. These will offer downforce to keep the front end grounded, helping with acceleration. The rest of the chassis is also completely new, with the SP model also offering Olin's electronic suspension. And then there's Honda's attention to detail. Part of that attention to detail is the whole key setup. First of all, we've gone across to FOBs, uh, because that's sort of the way of the future. But more so, if you look over here at the dash, it's all clean. I mean, it's just a solid top yoke, solid everything, nothing here. There's no key, anywhere to put a key. And the part of the fun of that is, is because, well, they needed that ram air system that went direct. And more so, they wanted to do something a bit different and a bit cool. So instead of pushing a button somewhere here and having huge big dials, to turn it on, you go, How cool is that? Of course, it's not just about aesthetics. The motor is the biggest change. Everyone in the superbike industry, previous Honda Fireblade owners have been begging Honda for horsepower. Give us horsepower. Well, guess what? Honda have given us horsepower and they've given us a hell of a lot of it. In fact, they've given us 217 of them, 24 more than the previous Fireblade. In case you haven't realized, that's just madness. However, while having a mental MotoGP motor is good fun, it does come with a particular drawback. Okay, the thing about this motor is that it feels like a racing bike motor. 
Now racing bikes, there's nothing at the bottom end, all at the top. I mean, look, first gear, watch this. First gear, low RPM. Nothing, 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 nothing. You see that? I mean, it's only kind of halfway through the rev range that it starts taking. But that is how racing motors work. So because of that, you've got to ride it like a race bike. Low gears, high RPM, keeping the rev range, full market. Naturally, there's a full complement of electronic gadgetry that works with typical Honda efficiency, apart from one small omission. This is the non-SP model, so no standard quick shifter, and that's quite annoying. Sort of every other motorcycle these days has one. Why doesn't this come standard? And then there's the stoppage. And the brakes, this one uses a Nissan caliper, the non-SP, which means it's really sharp but not very exact. So trail braking becomes a little bit more difficult. And so, here we have a machine whose ancestors were never quite apex predators, but that's okay because they made ordinary gentlefolk happy and therefore sold by the container full. This in turn made the bean counters at head office very happy and a happy bean counter means a happy company. But now the engineers seem to have tossed the Honda friendly guidebook into the trash and taken a leaf out of the book of their mates at the MotoGP team. This bike is not your friendly trainable dragon, but the full Tolkien Smaug, ready to incinerate whole villages. Will the man on the street be happy with this? We will have to see. As for the man on the track... It's a thrilling ride. The Honda Fireblade we've been waiting for has arrived! So there we have it ladies and gentlemen, a South African scoop, the two brand new Fireblades. Now, Robert, it's always kind of a, a big thing when Honda releases a Fireblade. I mean, this is the biggest motorcycle manufacturer in the world releasing their sort of flagship technology. But for once, it's not really what we expect. Not at all. Uh, previous Fireblades, you kind of felt like they've held back. You know, they've... Well, they didn't. Well, I wouldn't say they held back, but they always sort of had this policy of building bikes. They had for a the rule common... book. Yeah, but it was sort of for the common man. It's yeah. like, we're going to build easy to ride bikes, mm. easy so anybody can get on them and ride them even if they're not necessarily the fastest thing out there. And they've kind of thrown that rule book rule sort of out of the window. They have, they've built a motorbike that for, for me, that's the first blade in a long time, well, the only blade yeah. that I felt proper MotoGP technology in yes. that bike. And I mean, Mark, Mar they used Mark Marquez in the, in, the, in the video to promote the bike. And I can I, feel a sense I, I, of Mark I, I Marquez also, in Also, yeah, that I get motorbike. the idea that there is certain Marquez that had a go and it says, maybe change this a little bit, change that a little bit. And that tells me that um, Marquez will be fast on it, Lorenzo will be slow and Crutchlow will fall off. <laughs> That's exactly what's going <laughs> to happen. That's exactly what's going to happen. You know, obviously we, we, will, we have and we will never ride a Marquez MotoGP bike, but just his riding style kind of, I could feel in the bike. You had to dig the front end into the corners. It's not that old blade, like you said, where it's just smooth and it kind of just laces through a track. You've got to be aggressive on that bike. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, we'll, we'll, let's recap it all. As you said, you've got to be aggressive. Mm. It's got that very kind of, uh, should we say, kind of reactive handling where yep. it's really going to kind of, you want to go in? Yeah, let's yep. go in. You know what I mean? Definitely. But you've got to be kind of ready for it. The motor is all top end. I mean, yep. no more of this Honda kind of easy rider. You've got to rev the living, I can't say it on, igni I can't say it on Ignition <laughs> TV, I'm sorry, but uh, you've, got to, you've got to rev it a lot. Sort of a little bit to its detriment around Red Star. Well, that was yeah. a, look. The long gearing really was a detriment around Red Star. We only used three gears around that entire track. And you First only gear most of the yeah, time. you only briefly used third gear at the end of the back straight. And compared to the previous gen, the previous gen had more torque than the current bike. Yeah. But like you said, once it bike gets over seven thousand wow. RPM, wow, a whole new atmosphere of motorcycling wow. kicks wow. in, and you know you are on, on something very yeah. special. So okay, Marquez, you've got to you've got to rev it. You've mm. got to ride the front end hard. Yep. Also, it feels like it was designed around Marquez's dimensions. It does because it's a very short bike. You climb on it, pegs yeah. are high. You're over the front, not not extremely over the front, but you you are put into a race position. You are put to put it this way: they have built, they've gone the opposite way of building a, a street bike that can be ridden on a track. 
they now have. Sorry, by the way, we're at Fired Up and on a Saturday morning, and as per usual, there's only about a hundred people. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell <laughs> the government. Isolation, yo. Um, yeah. So, you so they built bike. this time. They built a super bike, track bike that can be ridden on the road. I think that is the biggest yeah. difference. I feel. No, no, no. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. I mean, previously it was sort of well, what does man on the breakfast run mm, want to ride? Yeah. You know what I mean? He's got a he's got a uh, he's now got a green, he's got Mark, a green Mark grocer and he works at a counting firm. Yeah. Okay, because. <laughs> I did, I did have a criticism of the previous blade that I couldn't quite fit on it, but then when they came out with the stats on this one, they, they sort of said, a more compact riding style, I went... Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so did half of South Africa, because we have yeah, I know. big we, riders we, in this we, country. We're rather large people, aren't we? You know what I mean? Yetis. Uh, so, okay, there's one more thing to sort of get at. Now, these bikes we rode, they are homologation specials, which means Honda flew them in specially. They're one of the first off the production line. So they're not actually here yet. They'll be here, I think it's June sometime June, or July, something yep. like that. They haven't worked out a price yet. But estimations are not looking good. They're not because it's our beautiful South African Rand that's not looking good. So my biggest criticism with the current bikes, I mean, I, I really enjoyed both the base and the SP bikes. They are phenomenal. They are a huge mm. step up, but no quick shifter, no auto blip on the base model is yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. I'm sorry from Honda, that is just pathetic in this modern day time, but they're talking about 380 for the base bike okay, and yeah. about 450, 480 for an SP. Yeah, okay, this was ladies and gentlemen, Estimate. just, just, okay. They're, they're basing that on the European prices, yeah. Honda, South Africa. That's literally they're, a they've conversion. Got, yeah, they've got to negotiate still. So that is not the sort of set price, but it is probably going to be the pricier super bike out there. One, one more thing, we had the base and the SP. Give us your sort of, which one would you go for, considering there's quite a price gap? Uh, SP, uh, because it's got the Olin's electronic suspension, which adapts itself more to the average rider, the track day rider. If you buy the base, you're going to have to put a quick shifter oh, yeah. and auto blip on it. And, and you're going to have to get a Ricky Mirage to help you set that bike up because it was very soft, the setup and that that we had, where as the SP, I felt climbed on it, put it in track mode and the settings felt really good. <laughs> well, there we have it. So <laughs> thank you very much for joining us once again, Rob. And uh, yeah, the new Fireblade, a big surprise indeed. Mm. And we'll see them in June.